Hello, scholars. Welcome to our lesson today on enslaved people and the triangular trade. We will be looking today at, or we will learn how enslaved Africans were treated on the trade ships. We will define two terms, export and import, and we will examine items, including people who were or that were traded in the triangular trade. We have to start with our lesson in the last class. Do you remember the improvements to agriculture that we talked about in the last class? The invention of the seed drill, the use of crop rotation, the breeding of larger animals, and the invention of the windmill? Well, these improvements in agriculture meant that more and more land was being farmed. And having more land to farm meant that farmers needed help farming that land. So as improvements were made for farming, the need for more workers increased. Unfortunately, farmers did not want to spend money on hiring workers, which would of course mean less money for themselves. Europeans introduced the idea of using enslaved people to get workers in the farmer's fields. You'll remember from our earlier studies that the colonists first enslaved Native Americans to work in the fields of the colonies, but they turned to enslaved Africans when Native Americans as slaves didn't work out. The slave trade grew rapidly and was unfortunately very successful. Enslaved Africans were shipped from Africa and were sold and traded as if they were property or animals. Enslaved Africans were crowded onto ships for the voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. Often they were chained together and collared to prevent any attempts at jumping ship or trying to escape. The photo here on the left with the blue background is of a neck collar that would be fastened around an enslaved person's neck. The part sticking up with the little hook would be fastened to a chain. So several enslaved people would be fastened to the same chain and that chain would be fastened to the ship. The photo on the right is an aerial view or bird's eye view of a ship filled with enslaved people. It gives you a look at how crowded it would be on two of the levels of the ship. Now, before we continue, Let's define a couple of important words related to the triangular trade. The first word is the word export. Export means to send to other countries or places for selling or trading. When you have goods to export, it means you have or raise or grow or build more of those goods than you need, so you sell them or trade them with others. You send them out to these others. A way to think of that and remember it is think of export, it exits your country, right? They both start with EX. So export, it exits your country or your place, right? You are selling or trading it. It's exiting. You're sending it out. Exit. Export. 
The second important word is the word import. Now, import means to bring in from other countries or places for buying or trading. When you have to import goods, it means that you do not already have those goods. So you need to have them brought in. You bring them in by buying them or trading to get them. A way to remember this one is to think import in, right? You're bringing it in, in, import. It's important, scholars, to remember both of these terms and that export means you have enough of it to send out, to sell or trade. And import means you don't have enough of that. So you have to have it brought in. You import it by buying it or trading to get it. If you're having trouble, press pause for a moment and study that. Export and import are very important as we continue on in this lesson. Now back to the triangular trade. Ships established trade routes to exchange goods for enslaved Africans. The trade routes meant that the ships were always transporting goods from one place to another, never having an empty ship. Remember, an empty ship would not produce any money for the ship owner and crew. A quick look at the triangle here in black shows you the route that ships would often use, <coughs> excuse me, getting from place to place. As these places exported goods, right, had them shipped out and had other goods imported, meaning brought in to their places. Let's take a closer look at this triangular trade. We're going to start at Africa with the red. Africa had people living there that the West Indies or the Caribbean islands did not have. So enslaved Africans were exported from Africa to be brought to the West Indies, right? They were exiting Africa. This means the West Indies were importing the enslaved Africans, right? Think about it. The West Indies does not already have people from Africa living there, so they are having enslaved Africans brought in to the West Indies. Once the ship got to the West Indies, the ships would sell or trade some of the enslaved Africans, and they would pick up sugar and molasses from the West Indies. Sugar and molasses came from the sugarcane farm plantations that were in the West Indies. This area of blue islands in the circle runs right near the equator, great area for crops growing of sugarcane. That sugarcane and molasses that were picked up in the West Indies were exported from the West Indies, again, meaning it was sent out. It exited the West Indies. And remember, that's where it grew sugarcane. It was brought in to the 13 British colonies. So the colonies were importing sugar and molasses, right? It was being brought in to the colonies. Now, it's very important to note that when the ships left Africa, and stopped in the West Indies to sell and trade enslaved Africans, 
The ships did not sell and trade all of the people who were on the ships. They sold and traded only some of them in order to get sugar and molasses with the plan of then selling and trading the remaining enslaved Africans when the ships got to the 13 colonies. So again, scholars taking a look at the red circled area, the ships would leave the blue islands right in this area with sugar and molasses, exporting it to the 13 colonies in this area of blue. Right? So here, the colonies would be importing, meaning they brought in sugar, molasses, and the enslaved Africans that hadn't been sold or traded in the West Indies. When the ships arrived in the colonies, they sold and traded the enslaved African people, the sugar and molasses that they had on board and filled the ships with rum, guns and iron goods. The rum, guns, and iron goods were exported from the colonies. Now, again, remember, that means they were sent out or exited the colonies where they were being made. The ships would take these goods to Europe and Africa to sell and trade there. That means Europe and Africa were importing rum, guns, and iron. They did not already have or make those things, so they had to have them brought in, in, importing. So as you can see, scholars, as the ship made its way, the ships made their way around the triangle, right, following, again, the black trails going around the Atlantic Ocean, at all times their ships had right, people or goods in them being carried from one of those places to the other, always continuing the triangle-shaped trade routes. So let's look at our objectives for today. This was a lot to unpack in one lesson. We learned how enslaved Africans were treated on the trade ships. How were they treated? Not well. Remember, the ships were crowded. They were chained and collared to keep them on board, to keep them from trying to escape. And there wasn't great food, right? good heat. The conditions were not pleasant. The second thing we learned about today, we defined the terms export and import. Remember, when you export goods, you are sending them out. They are exiting your country, your place. When you import goods, they are being brought in, right? you are bringing them in to your country or your place. And lastly, we examined items and people that were traded in the triangle. So make sure you're familiar with things that were exported from each of those places and things that were imported to each of those places in the triangle route. That brings us to today's assignment. Remember, open the attached Google form to answer the questions about today's lesson. You may look back at today's lesson for help if you need to. Look back at the pictures, listen again to information. When you're finished, 
Remember, click that submit button at the bottom of the Google form. That is what sends your answers to your teacher. Thanks for listening and joining me again today for another lesson in history.